What's up, everybody? It's your favorite juvenile promise ever nerd, and today we are looking at the Banana Force Orion Predator on loan to me from Vex underscore Supreme. Hit me up, yes, I want to take a look at it. I liked Banana Force's um, previous release, like the Car Robots one. So I was like, yeah, absolutely. So he sent it my way, and we're going to take a look at it. But in order to take a look at it, we got to first take a look at accessories. He comes with extra hands. We get left and right trigger finger hands, left and right posing hands, left and right holding hands, and that's in addition to the left and right fist hands that you saw in the opening footage. So pretty much the perfect array of hands. He has an alternate head sculpt. It's very similar to the other one, um, except it has like this mouthpiece that's uh, sculpted on it that's a bit different, but the rest of it is very, very, very similar. Um, so there you go. We'll talk about it a little bit more detail when we get to the actual figure. He comes with his signature rifle. It's really well sculpted and painted. We have the gunmetal and silver and gold accents. Silver and gold. Red uh, accents as well. Some translucent uh, plastics are in there. Some black line work, etc. Very nice and um, very intimidating. And he can hold that in his trigger finger hand just by sliding it in. It's not the most secure, though. You know, it, I mean, it works, don't get me wrong, but you kind of wish it had a little bit more grab on it. When you have the backpack installed, you can use that tab and store uh, the rifle on his back. You get two axes of, um, and then two extensions. We're going to put one set aside to just make it easier to look at. Um, but this, this stuff comes apart, I think, in a number of different spaces. Yeah, so there's like this this and i think you can kind of like adjust it to have the length of the axe you know you could have medium you know or extended or more compact you know depending on your sensibilities uh which is a thoughtful thing and i, I wanted to say it actually came apart one more place but it doesn't look like it gunmetal uh silver and then silver highlights and then some gold highlights as well and then the orange translucent um Really cool, really well done, and the fact that it is kind of collapsible is pretty thoughtful. And at any one of the breaks, you can kind of slide um, the axe in to the uh, just the holding hand and then secure it with the other end of the break. Using the same peg, uh, you can also store the axe on his bag. I have it at an awkward angle, but it's like a, a hexagon-shaped peg, so you just have to kind of find where it fits in properly. He has like a jetpack kind of a vibe going on here with multiple shades of red, some gold accents, um, some black and silver line work. And uh, these obviously hinge and then they're on ball pegs also so they swivel. To attach that, you just put it into that groove and then slide it down. You get two of these double wheel options. Uh, we'll take a look at one. You have rubber wheels and they do spin. Uh... They had to spin in concert, which is actually kind of cool. And then we have the silver uh, paintwork there. And here lies a magnet so that you can take this off and then attach that with the same magnet. Pretty cool. Gimmicks wise, when you extend the barrel, it will light up if you have the batteries installed. He doesn't and I don't have them. So uh, we're not going to show them, obviously, but it does light up. And then the other gimmick, of course, is probably somewhat predictable, but you can open up his chest and remove the matrix. Um, it is magnetized, I think. It has a nice little gem in there. And then we got all sorts of, like, chrome work going on. You know, it's it's an Optimus Prime, so it gets a matrix. They, they, they won't accept no for an answer. That's just the way it is. Deal with it. And now we can talk about the figure, and I do want to talk about this one aspect, first and foremost, the head sculpt. In the opening um, this, you know, intro to this, I said uh, your favorite juvenile prize, favorite nerd, and that's because there's something about the size, the proportion of the eyes and upper head to the proportion of the lower part of the head that makes him look young to me, like a teenager. Um, and I don't think that's the intention, and I'm not sure that that matches the aesthetic of the rest of it. That's a subjective criticism, of course, but it is something that stands out to me. Deco-wise, gorgeous. Metallic blue eyes. We got uh, the ears. They are uh, posable and sculpted beautifully with some silver accents on there as well and some chrome. Very, 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 very nicely done. Chrome inside of the visor or the crest there as well. 
The neck is on a hinge, and then there's a ball peg as well. Using both, you can get the head up, down, side to side, and confuse prime look a bit. So, all good. Then we have, we'll go through the shoulders. We have these little flaps here. They're supposed to raise up on their own, and I think that they probably will. I'm just using a little bit more caution. The diamond plating is painted silver on there and looks great. You have a hinge inside of the chest that gets the shoulder up. You can move the smokestack and use a secondary hinge to get the arm up to 90 degrees with no problem. It is fully painted. There's also two shades of red and then the black line work and the chrome uh, vents and stuff. And he has added these Autobot symbols. So it looks good. Smokestack looks good. Silver uh, to silver gunmetal and then uh, the black line work inside there. You also get the 360 uh, rotation at the shoulder as well and a reverse butterfly. Nothing really on the forward. I'll back out just a little bit. We have a double jointed elbow that gets you the full run. We also have a bicep swivel and we have the two shades of red die cast joints breaks up the color a good bit so I dig that. For the lower part of the arm there's a hinge where the whole wrist sits so you get in out there and then the hands are on a ball peg so you get the swivel and a little bit of up down as well. There's also the two shades of red, the gold, the chrome vents, some silver highlights and some black line work throughout as well. So all of that looks good. Um, the chest and torso area, we've kind of talked about the matrix already, but we'll go through it again. We have silver paint, gold paint, black paint, two shades of red, and the blue translucent. You can open this up, obviously, and see more details in there. We've already talked about the matrix. Um, we have silver paintwork down here, gunmetal as well, and two shades of red. We have an ab crunch that you can see there. Pretty good range. And then you also have a ball peg down at the bottom which gets using both, you get them pretty well over and a little bit back. And nothing really for the teapot. You do get a waist swivel. Now, we have hip skirts. We can get them up and out of the way to expose our hips and we'll back out the camera a bit. We have universals and um, oddly enough, they don't allow you to get beyond there, which is probably more than you'll ever need. It just seems strange that they would be limited. And tensioned forward and back as well. This one is a little scary on the tightness, but you get the full uh, Monty there. Thigh swivel at the bottom of the universal, so that works well. Deco-wise on the pelvis, all the gold looks great, and then the black line work. Silver paint throughout. On the side, we have black line work and some gold. Double jointed knee, ratcheted at the lower joint. Ratchet it at the upper joint as well, get you past 90 degrees. Um, the lower legs are beautiful. The, the metallic blues come through beautifully. There's two shades of them. There's some gold and silver, um, or silver and gold accents. There's some red translucent, some red paint, just sculpted in deco to the nine. Nines, rather. Ankle tilt down. Mm. Let's see, nothing really for an ankle tilt up. And then you do get a rocker on a hinge there. And then you can adjust the heel to kind of give you some balance. And there it is underneath. Which makes me think you can put the backpack under there as well. So it looks like. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's great. <laughs> you know, um, it's, it's great. It's really well done. Size comparison-wise, there he is with the black deco of the older mold. And I'll tell you, like, the idea of having a whole bunch of primes, if you're, like, into all of them, that are, like, similar scale, beautiful deco, et cetera, et cetera, that is alluring. I don't know how far they'll get, but I get, I get the allure there. They look good together. And there he is with the Magic Square Prime. So Magic Square Prime comes up to about the top of his head. Magic Square Prime is about the same size as the TE and 44, so it should give you some sort of an idea. Final thoughts wise, we'll start with the negatives. I gotta be honest with you, my biggest negative is entirely subjective, but it's the head sculpt. I don't like the head sculpt. It, he, he looks young. Now, I think you can pose it and get away with it, but I just think he gives, I guess it is Orion, right? Maybe they are going for like a younger look. He's got the matrix, I don't know. But it's a bit younger than my preference, at least in its presentation. I know this sounds like a nitpick and I'm willing to accept those charges, but it's really, it's not an easy 
to swap the hands on this guy. And you feel like you're pushing against the brick, the gray plastic that sits inside of the red casing a little too hard and might could do some serious damage to it. So just something worth noting. And some of the joint tolerances are a little off. Like there's that one scary hip. Uh, but that's really the only one that comes to mind. But there's a couple other like really tight joints. There's a bicep that's a little tight. Like there's a couple tight joints in there that shouldn't be a problem, but just as smooth as the rest of them feel, the ones that are like overly tight really throw you off. And that's really all I got. Of positives wise, it's really easy. The sculpt is great with the exception of the head, but that's subjective. And if you do like the head, then the sculpt is perfect. The paint is perfect. It pops, it's well applied, it's carefully done. It's tremendous. It's articulated extremely well. The engineering is absolutely fantastic in regard to the articulation. Now, to be fair, a lot of it is borrowed from their previous releases, but that doesn't make it bad or deny it any merit. They should use their own work as a stepping stone. The accessories are appropriate, thought out, and integrate well in the present is absolutely tremendous so it's a strong recommend for me the only issue i have with it is that head sculpt at the end of the day thanks for listening thanks for watching until next time take care